it's a special. Now, last week I went to an amateur boxing club in North London with Anchor, my producer here, um, for all things boxing. Now, this club's called Islington, and it is officially the busiest boxing club in the country. It's got more carded boxers. That means boxers are ready to box. And it's also got more keep fitters. It's well over a 1,000 members. Well, it's not situated in a very nice part of Islington. It's situated in the rough end. Oh, yeah, I can say that. I can say what I like. Sort of where I was born, to be perfectly honest with you. Anyway, this is what happened when I went out on very cold February night to visit Islington Amateur Boxing Club. On the ground floor of the half a dozen bovis huts, there's an area with, I don't know, perhaps 20 bags, mirrors and two rings off to the left. There's one of the coaches in there at the moment. There's containers full of gloves, toilets, but it's upstairs in the, the old traditional part of the, 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 the club where the other ring is and the bags are. And that's where the junior boxes are at the moment. Seniors making their way down. Okay, all right. Up on the top floor, there's perhaps 30 boxers just going backwards and forwards, stretching. And over in the corner, there's a couple of guys involved with the club. I'm joined by um, Lenny Hagland, the uh, chairman of the club, and Mickey Doherty, the events manager. And that's an important role because you need to, uh, well, you need to raise money to keep going. Len, what's going on here at the moment? At the moment, we've got the junior uh, competitive boxers all warming up. Uh, that means they're carded. They they're all box. carded, yeah. yeah. Most, yeah. Near enough, every one of these are carded. I think we've got about 20-odd here at the moment. Uh, maybe four or five might not be carded, but most of them are. Uh, and they're all ready to go out and box. Uh, it's been really busy over the late that we've had to, this year, and last year, in fact, have academies for both junior and senior. Well, you mean more people coming through the door, more people wanting a box? All the time, yeah. We've got juniors who are ready to come up, who want to come up to this level, but they, they walk in the door every night of the week, basically, wanting to join the club, and they have to start at some level. We don't put them in this level straight away. They go in what we call our academy, where they learn the basics of boxing. When we're happy, after a few months of their dedication, their technique, their fitness, we move them up. Yeah. What age can you take them in at, Len? I mean, they can't box through 11, can exactly. they? It's still 11. Yeah. So what age can you actually have them in the building, training? Our, our rule and, and our part of our insurance policy is, is eight years of age. Okay. Uh, we don't take them under eight. And uh, you get, get parents trying to give them young under eight? Yeah, quite often. Uh, I've, I've had even people coming in and say, my, my boy's going to be good, he's four years old. Well, Look at him skip. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, it's just basically you have to be as nice as you can and say listen we can't take them in because of insurance policy and, and they're quite happy with that. Uh, if you start explaining well your boy don't really know too much at four years of age it, it don't wash down too well you know. Now Mick I want to bring you in if I can. Mick um, club shows are really important now there was a time when all the club shows took place in a hall, you know, and you could pay on the door. Mostly now it's well, half and half. It, generally it's um, bigger venues, and you have your shows at the Emirates, if I'm not mistaken. But, but you, still, you still have the open shows, we call them. What's the thing you do at the Boston Dome? Uh, the Boston, we've got one in there uh, two weeks on the 8th of March. Uh, we sell advanced tickets because it is going to, you know, we, we're expecting the sellout. It's not a dinner, it's not a dinner show, no, is it? No, it's a stand. No, it's just a stand, stand at the bar, and well, we have laid out seats there. Gets fairly packed in there. That's why we do the advance ten pound tickets, and room permitting ten pound on the door. Obviously, if uh, some parents or friends have travelled a long way to see someone, you'll squeeze someone extra in because it's important for the fighters to actually have their own support there. Now, the people that go to that, Mickey, do they want to see you know adults? Do they want to see seniors? Or are they happy watching you know the eleven and the twelve year olds are watching here? Is there sort of sometimes uh, they can see just as good a fight between two thirteen year olds, fourteen year olds as they would with two super heavies. So uh, in fact, there's a lot of them that do actually <laughs> after after the schoolboy are finished they say right that's 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 the serious stuff gone now and they go and have a few pints but no there's a cross section i mean you know uh all, all, all the boys are always well matched so uh you know it's a good good entertainment and for a tenner you know it's a lot cheaper than the emirates football wise <laughs> Well, 
when the uh, when the juniors come through the door, they're coming through at 9, 10, 11 and 12. Do you ask them why they want a box or do they tell you why they want a box? I'll be honest, it's not a sort of question I ask them. I just let them come in, see what they're like, have a look at them. And if they look like they've got a little bit of potential and a little bit of talent, then you start to take a bit of interest in them. But there's so many kids come through the door and they just want to try it out. And a lot of them are coming because their dads want them to come. Um, there's a few like that where they just come along, uh, dad wants them to do boxing, and the kid is not 100% set up. Is that difficult? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a little bit really of pressure their, their hearts, with some it? of them. Um, we get a lot of boys from the travelling community, so that's their upbringing, that's their culture. They're expected to fight anyway. So um, you'll find that the majority of these boys here now. Well, the, 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 most, so most of these kids here uh, would be a lot of these two thirds of them be traveller boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, over half of them, yeah. yeah. Um, but we're trying to encourage more local kids to come in because it can get a bit overwhelming for the local kids. And they come in and they see a lot of travellers and they, they get a little bit put off. They're a little bit sort of, uh, how can I say, um, a little bit uh, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah. Now that is, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I know that from other clubs, they say the same thing. Yeah. Dow Youth says the same thing. Yeah. Got to try and pull in so some, some to, local boys. To keep uh, an even balance. So with the little junior academy that they run downstairs, that's an opportunity for other kids to learn the basic stuff, the footwork and throwing the punches and the blocking the punches. So when they come up here, they should be able to get in the ring and have a basic idea of the fundamentals. So like the balance, the footwork, you know, throwing proper punches and knowing how to block. Them. So if a kid came in at 11 -ish and he's walked in and he's got a little bit of idea, you know, in a sense he can stand up, how long before he's actually Swapping punches because a lot of people tell all these fibs about oh, I went to a gym and the first day I was there I was sparred with someone who was two stone every day. How long? So let's imagine an eleven-year-old boy comes in here, right? He knows a little bit, but he's not he's not a ringer. How soon before he possibly gets up here, gets a gum shield, gets a head guard, and gets in the ring? I would say if he shows uh, the right potential, i.e., that he's got the, the a grasp of the basic fundamentals, i.e., keeping the guard up, balance knowing how to throw the basic punches and block the basic punches i would say within a couple of weeks he could get in there and have a spar but it'd be a conditioned spar where you watch them very closely so you're really close to yeah, them at yeah, this yeah. point yeah well if they're if they're small kids i'm in the ring with them okay yeah with the bigger ones i'd certainly to stand on the apron but with the small ones i'm actually in there with them so i'll say stop immediately up and separate them say it's getting a bit untidy you need to tidy it up a little bit, you know. So that, that, that ruins the, the myth that you walk through the door off the street and the next thing you know you're in the ring swinging punches. That, that, that just no, couldn't happen at any respectable club, could it, Paul? I don't have experience of that. I don't know that. I don't think that's true at all. I mean, it might happen in some places, but certainly hasn't happened wherever I've been. You know, you don't sling them straight in the ring. It, well, you know, I know you had a kid losing the uh, schoolboy semi-finals the other day by, a, by two points. Do you ever lose sleep when you come back from an event, when you've had a boy just go out by the yeah. narrowest, or, 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 or he's maybe not boxed his potential? Do you lose I'll sleep? I lose sleep the night before and the night after. You know, you, so you, you get really anxious. I mean, they're like, you know, you, you get a bond with these kids. They're like my sons. And you, you don't want any harm to come to them. I mean, the first thing is their welfare, you know. Um, you want to see them perform well, and you want to see them give a good account of themselves. Uh, and that, for me, is, is, the, is the main thing. They give a good account of themselves. They give it their best effort. Um, if they're slacking, I'll certainly let them know. Um, but, you know, the main thing is encouragement and guidance along the way. And uh, just to keep a very, very close eye on them. Well, Rich, you're, um, you're genuinely dreaming of the Olympics. You went to an Olympic qualifier. You're out in Baku at the World Championships in Azerbaijan, representing Jamaica. Jamaica. Um, so you, you've still got an Olympic dream going on, as well as the ABAs. Yeah, I've got, you know, it, it, I do still have the dream to, you know, do, do well in the Olympics and conquer and show that I am world class and show that I am of an um, ABA class level also. So, yeah, you know, the ABAs is my ambition and so is to represent Jamaica. The first qualifiers are in May in Brazil. So you're hoping yeah. to get a call? Yeah, of course, all the time. You and Joe Van Young at the Fitzroy Lodge are both hoping for the phone call. Yeah, we're both hoping for that phone call. Well, we both we both know what we have to do, so we both you know we both know the process as now. We've had a chance to see the opponents. We've had a chance to know what we're dealing with. So it's, being at these championships has helped us step up in a major way. Yeah, not wrong. So, and so, so you're 
until you get the call to go to Brazil for the Olympic qualifier wearing the yellow of Jamaica. Until then, you'll be an Islington boy wearing an Islington vest. Yeah. A Hayes Working Men's Hayes Working Men's Club <laughs> going for the ABAs. Yeah, that's the ambition right there to win Northwest Divs, then go on, go on to conquer the ABAs, and then do what we have to do onwards. When did you first walk through the door here, Reese? And what made you uh, a come here and b take up boxing? Um, I'm from the East London area, and um, I originally started at Peacock, then had a brief spell at West Ham, even though I never had no fights for them, but then I went to the Peacock gym just one day during the summer when West Ham was closed. And as I coached there, Andy, he was training, and he said to me, yeah, we have sparring at Islington. And then I went over there, I liked what was going on. I was 16 years old at the time, and then I enjoyed coming over here, even though I'm from the East London area. It's a fair I'll, journey then each day or three yeah, nights, going nights from week. going from Beckton all the oh. way to Hornsey it was it was a journey and then now I'm in the Stratford area, so Stratford is where I live. It is, yeah. So it, it has made things easier and then I was here, I had my first eleven fights here, I had a brief spell in New York because I have family there. And then I went to Repton for three years and came back and um, I felt that, you know, here's always been home regardless of whether I went to Repton, whether I was in Jamaica, no matter where I went in the world, Islington for boxing has always been. And when did you first come through the door? What made you decide to become a boxer? Uh, I was a bit overweight when I started, so I come down the gym. I know how you feel, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you look, you're in good shape, mate. Thanks. And I was overweight when I started, so I come down the gym just to lose a bit of weight. And then um, I always liked boxing. I was always a fan of boxing. And then... Um, yeah, just got to the level where you know where you learn something and you want to put it into practice. So then, yeah, that's how it was. And was there anything about the boxing and the training and the sort of control that surprised you? I mean, was it what, was it everything you thought it would be, or was it different? I mean, I mean, boxing probably calmed me down a lot as well. When when I started boxing, I was a bit probably a bit troublesome. But outside? Yeah, probably a little bit troublesome. I mean, I wasn't doing nothing nothing too crazy, but I was a little bit troublesome. But since I started boxing, I was just everything just calmed down and I mean I used uh, the dedication and discipline from boxing to apply that to the rest of my life and I'm doing all right Is at the moment. Is that work you know? Yeah yeah I'm doing all right at the moment now. I'm qualified as a personal trainer and I'm, I'm, all, I'm doing all right. It's amazing that isn't it really that um, how often that has, it sounds like it's one of those hard luck stories but it's the truth isn't it? Nice. It's just mate it's stunning really. It's the truth and it's, it's the truth for a lot of people. I know it's cliche and they say oh boxing changes lives but it does does people come in the gym you see them when they come in the gym you see them six months later they're not the same they're not the same people so okay. any perks for being team captain do you get a free track suit or anything nah, or no, no perks not no even free track band. i need to have a word of lenny about that but no you should do because no in all fairness suit. there's a lot you know you're the first you're the first fighter i'm talking to you're under a bit of pressure and i mean they should sort you out at least with a fancy armband or nah, something i'll be honest they have got me i've got my own special Hey, oh, my special go. jacket, yeah. So there is something. Team captain on it, yeah. But <laughs> other than that, no other perks. Well, are you involved in any of the outreach programmes here or any of the, any of the schools that come I'm, in? I'm involved in the outreach programmes here. I mean, I, I do work for the club as well and do a lot of work within the community. I mean, we had, even this morning, we had some uh, local school in, all-girls school, and I was helping coordinating the session with that. So it's more or less boxing 24-7 for me. So. James, you're local. Uh, yeah, well, I live in Green now, yeah. You, live, you were local, yeah, local. State Newton, sort of. What made, you, what made you join this club? Um, I don't know, I just... I heard about it from someone else, and then I just come down here, and everyone's nice. I met I met a few of the boys before I come here, and then I just kind of joined it. Were you a boxing fan? No, I've never really been a sport person. My dad always loved sport and he always pushed me into it. But I didn't like team sport. I didn't like team sport. And then he said when I was little that I'd be a good boxer, but I just thought that. Like, Why is that? I've got good reactions. I used to you know, catch mugs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then I come down here and then I just I started doing it for fitness and then I did the sparring and then. And has it been has it been harder or easier than you thought? In some ways, you know what I mean. I mean, did you, did you think it'd be harder to be good enough to go in the ABAs? Well, this is always a dream, and in the distance, there's always something that I would never 
I don't know, I remember I had one bout and I met people with 12 bouts and I'd be like, wow. And then, then now I've had 30 bouts <laughs> and I'm fighting people with 70 bouts. <laughs> and I'm just... And when you've had 70, you'll be fighting well, yeah. Germans with 200. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's... I don't know, I've, 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 how I've grown is... I'm looking back on what I started, it's ridiculous, it's grown so, so much. Are you, are you sort of still working on the one day at a time and just see where you go? Like, go in the ABS this year, see where I go? Yeah. Well, I, I got a bit boxed for London a few times, um, and that was that was great. I went up to Scotland, and we fought in front of 2,000 people outside, and they were playing Braveheart, and everyone was just ridiculous. This was recent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I read about that. It was a mad that, event, that, that wasn't was it? Crazy event. The they, best. they relaunched Scottish boxing. Yeah. yeah, that was the best, best one of the best experiences of my life. I'd coming out, to kind of thousands of people taking their T-shirts off and swinging around their heads. Amazing. And then, um, yeah, it's just growing and growing and growing. And I, I've never really thought about where I want to take it. But then I'd like to fight for England. That'd be my thing. Yeah, shoot you. Now, what makes what makes Islington special to you? This club special to you personally? I think it's like I've been seen at other clubs before. I've been spy at other clubs, and it's like a little family in here. Like oh, big family oh, is big the case. Family. Family. Well, when, when I started, there was a lot less people. Yeah. I, um, spoke, I spoke to Lenny when I first came through the door, and I said, Lenny, how many have been here tonight? And he went, oh, I think we get about 30 or 40. There's about 90 in here. Yeah. I don't want him to do my accounts. <laughs> yeah. Since, because I started before Lenny came, and then um, it was literally it was, it was none of us. And then since he's come, the club's grown so much, and there's so many, so much. So much we just look, look, if you look at it now, and even a year and a half ago, it's a completely different place. It's a strange thing, isn't it? Because you walk into a gym like this, and there's, you know, there's men, there's women, there's 11 year olds, there's black, there's white, there's travellers, just about everything in here. There's Muslim fighters, there's Christians, probably some atheists. It's a right, it's a right mix, isn't it? Right, rainbow coalition, eh? It's like a melting pot. Like everyone's come together. There's, there's no, no one looks at anyone any different. It's just you're in the gym, fighting, and I don't know. It's something about being punched, punching, <laughs> having a fight with someone brings you close together afterwards. I don't know what it is. Bevis, Lenny was telling me fibs earlier on. He said there might be about 30 or 40 fighters in here. There's about 70 fighters in the building. What's going on? <laughs> It's busier well, than even he thought it was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest, the last year or so, it's just really, really taken off. I mean, I, I've been coaching here for about eight years, and when I first came here, we had three carded boxers. Now you've got nearly 60 or yeah, something, yeah, including... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Staggering. Yeah, it's incredible. And uh, to be honest, uh, we've got a lot of youngsters coming through, and I think the next two or three years, we'll see a lot more. We've had, we had four national champions 2011. We had a national semi finalist already this year, a guy who boxed for England, Dan Ballinger, and I think it's just going to go from strength to strength. Oh, oh, oh. So why is that? I mean, is, it, is it that people want to fight more? Or not? Do they want to fight more because hey, it's a good club or, or part of that? Or is it that they see him boxing on TV? What is it? What's, what's making them come through the door like they're coming through the door? I think it's a bit of both. I think when the club's doing well, you get boxers, because we've got Vlad, he's the big like, heavyweight, who's who boxed. big German guy. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's about 60 bouts. Two, three years ago, we couldn't attract open-class right, like boxers awesome. to come and box at the club. We are getting raw novices that we've developed. I mean, Darren, Jordan, all those guys, yeah. we've developed them from scratch. Now we're getting guys from other clubs wanting to join us, which is a mark. Because the Repton have been doing it for years. Yeah, they, they've been attracting all the yeah, fighters yeah, when they've yeah. already done yeah, 20 yeah, bouts exactly. somewhere else. Now we can do that. So, um, yeah, I think it's a mark of what they see at shows and everything. But there have been a couple of lean years here, haven't there? And there's been a bit of controversy, a bit of aggravation. It, it's few, all sorted out yeah, now. Yeah, there have been a few lean years, but hopefully we'll be we'll behind that now and we're moving in, forward. In all fairness, you must be, you know, with regard to London clubs, you must be in, you know, the top five or six member-wise, or active member-wise. Well, active members, we're the biggest club in the country in terms of total, right? total members. Oh, that's just the 1,100 members, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but even at Carded at 60-odd, that's yeah, still good. I mean, going, I, I think... Uh, Probably Finchley, yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, Repton, Repton, but that's it. So you've got a card, you box, you're yeah. at Islington. When did you first walk through the door? What were your immediate thoughts? Um, I started here t about two years ago, and I've boxed for a different club before, and I was a bit unhappy what, there. Here or overseas? Uh, no, here in, uh, in London. And um, yeah, there were a bit surprised to see a woman first and then they, they warmed up with me. <laughs> you know, it's, it's only been, you know, it still hasn't been that long and not every club have women but I mean I'm looking here I mean to be honest with you everyone's all mixed in together anyway 
Yeah. You know, the fat, the ugly, the short, the thin. No, it's the true, the black, the white. Everyone's all mixed in here. Once they walk through the door, they're, they're boxes, really, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I am the fat or the ugly. Yeah, well, listen, I was talking about myself. Relax. <laughs> but they do, they all blend in once they come through the door. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, so, and have you found... Do you find it odd when you tell people you box? I always ask this question because I know that some women, when they do tell people they box, the people look at them and say, no, you're joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it still happen? They're surprised and they can't understand why you would punch someone else or get punched. Uh, but it depends where, where I am. When I'm at work, people are like, you are crazy, you are mad. And but my friends are fairly relaxed. <laughs> now, what, what, what do you do for a living? What do you do? Uh, I'm a cellist, musician. So you're, you're a cellist, you're a musician, so... Well, was there not a temptation for you just to become a sort of white-collar boxer and not become a proper amateur boxer? Or did you uh, want to do it properly? I wanted to do the real thing. <laughs> that, there's no way to do it halfway, I think. You, want to, you don't want to do it right. Jerry, Jerry joined the club in 1857. <laughs> it seems like that, Jerry, to me, mate, because you seem to have been here forever in a day, man. When did you first walk through the door? Was, was it here when you first walked through the door? No, I first boxed in um, ooh, early 80s and for New Enterprise. Okay. And then after my career finished, because I had an accident, I came down here, had my last two fights down here, then I thought, you know what, the shoulder's no good, so I retired. And then Mr. Hagland decided to ask me to take up coaching. The first thing I was doing was coaching the boys that came through the door. No, right now, this is, I mean, this is thriving at the moment. I mean, they're not here for me, these kids tonight. I mean, this is, this is genuinely buzzing, Jerry, by any standards, by mm. the 70s, the 80s, or the 90s. This is yeah. genuinely buzzing. OK, well, if you look around in this area, We've got a lot of youngsters and here, but there's nothing else for them to do. We've got a little football pitch over there which the Arsenal's controlling. And the only other place around here is the boxing. And with the um, internet and everything else, with the advert advertisement, with what Lenny and Mickey and the rest of the posse is doing, people are getting to know about the club. And plus, the boxers seem to be um, doing the business, if you like. That, yeah. You do need that, don't you? I mean, as much yeah. as you can have a good club, the centre of the community, hundreds of boys coming through the door, women coming through the door. You've also got to have some success, haven't you? You've yeah. got to have England vests, you've got to have fighters showing promise. That's right. Because with that, when you've got when people around the area see that the boxers are boxing good, they'll attract other boxers. Like we've attracted the tall Russian come all the way from yeah, yeah. Germany. He's just saw it on the website and he's joined the club. And um, that's how it's been. And a few other boys from other clubs have joined us. And we say, well, if you want to join us, welcome to hell. That's what I tell them. You know? yeah. At what point, say, like, let's say we go back in the last 20 years, how, how small, how low would it have been in here on, on the worst possible night? How empty would it have been? Let's say I was with you, what year would it have been? We would have been standing here and there would have been, what, five here, 10 here, 20 here? I'd say about... Five, six years ago. Yeah. And how many, if I was interviewing you six years ago, Jerry, how many boxes would we have been looking at? If we got ten boxes in here, you'd be lucky. Yeah. And what we've got right now, I mean, I mean, if I do a head count now, I mean, I'll do a quick head count. We're about nearly 40 down here. You've got yeah. about 30 or 40 juniors upstairs. Yeah. You know, you've got 100 people in here tonight. Yeah. With, with coaches and mm. people floating through. Yeah. That's staggering. It's good, and I don't care. Bring them on, because I like what I like, though. See all these little bad boys, who think they're good with the knives and the guns and whatever. Come down and see what a real man does. Man that steps in the ring and knows that there's a chance the other guy can beat him. These are the real, real people. These are real gladiators. I know all we do is try to instill discipline. So, so when they think they're the bad boys, come to a boxing club, come to Islington. We've got the boys here to see how bad you really are. And with, with that, you get some discipline, you find out about yourself, and who knows, make a better person. That's all we're about. What about all of you making them a bit better people for 
what's going on outside, because outside is hard enough. All this does is still discipline. So we heard there from Lenny Hagland and Mickey Doherty, Jerry the trainer, Bevis the trainer. We heard from Risha Gorey. We heard from Aaron Morgan. We heard from James Woodward. And we also heard from the German cellist. You couldn't invent it, could you? Now, one or two of the people there mentioned the show next week at the Boston Arms. That's on Thursday the 8th. You can pay on the door. And also in April, the 27th of April, a massive Islington dinner show inside the Emirates. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed not just that piece on Islington. I hope you've enjoyed everything on the show.